Finding Old Four Legs, an adventure story of silicons and scientists. Welcome to a story of the mysteries and adventure surrounding Old Four Legs the Silicanth. Travel with us across the Indian Ocean and down into deep sea canyons to find out more. Try and imagine finding a real life dinosaur strolling through the field. Then you will understand how excited scientists were when a silicanth was caught off the coast of South Africa in December 1938. Move over, you old fossil. I'm the scientist, and I tell the stories around here. Yes, it was Marjorie Courtney Latimer who noticed the unusual fish amongst the catch on a trawler, which had been fishing near East London. Hey, Wena. Who are you calling a fossil? My kind had only been known from fossil records until the South African discovery. We were thought to have become extinct more than 65 million years ago, the time of the dinosaurs. But now, as you can see, I'm not a fossil. I'm a real-life silicanth. When Marjorie saw the beautiful mauve blue scales with shiny silver markings, she said, It is the most beautiful fish I've ever seen. Ha! Just because she flatters you and you are named after her, you are completely in love. What a funny name. Latimeria Chalumnai. Well, I would have thought a scientist would have respect for scientific names. Do you know that the second part of my name comes from the Cholomna River near to where the ship was trolling? Of course I know that. Now let me get on with the story. Marjorie sent a sketch of the fish to Professor J.L.B. Smith who recognized it as the first real silicanth ever caught. You scientists think you are so important. It was the first silicanth known to science, not the first silicanth ever seen. Fishermen in the Comoros and Indonesia must have been catching us for hundreds of years before that, Chini. Okay, you are right. It was 14 years before scientists recorded another silicanth caught by fishermen of the Comoro Islands northeast of Madagascar. It was considered to be so important that the Prime Minister of South Africa at the time, D.F. Malan, provided an Air Force Dakota for Professor Smith to bring the silicanth to Makanda. And Professor Smith was impressed with us. I can tell you, we are the only living fish with a small central fin on our tail fin. Our limb-like pectoral and pelvic fins and similar fleshy second dorsal and anal fins are also unlike any other marine fishes. Ouch, man! <clears throat> Be careful with those pins! <laughs> In the middle of the snout is a large cavity filled with jelly-like substance. The sac is called the rostral organ. It may be used to detect weak electric currents and help the silicon find hidden prey. Instead of a bony vertebral column, as in many adult fishes, the silicon has a large, thick tube of cartilage called a notochord. This notochord is filled with oil, giving the silicon a strong and flexible spine. Mm. Yuck! Mm -mm. I'm tired of seeing all these pictures of my dead relatives. Hi, hi, hi. Let's go back to cartoons. We are the only living creatures that have a joint between the front and back part of the skull. This allows us to open our mouths very wide and swallow our prey whole. Don't worry. Humans aren't our taste. We prefer eating small fishes, although if they come our way, we will eat sharks, skates, eels, squid, and octopus. We like to do handstands while waiting for our prey. But I'm not telling you why. 
That is for me to know and you scientists to find out. Well, before you change your mind and try a taste of a scientist, let me get on with my history lesson. Another exciting discovery was a female silicanth caught off Mozambique in 1991. When it was dissected, it was found to be carrying 26 babies known as pups, which were almost ready to be born. A lot more about silicons was learned from this single fish. Until recently, almost all silicons, more than 200, have been caught in deep water off the Comoro Islands. This is besides the first one caught off East London, the Mozambique female, and two caught off Madagascar. Scientists were unaware that in Indonesia, silicones have occasionally been caught in deep sea shark nets. The local fishermen there call silicones Raja Laut, kings and queens of the sea. Yes, of course. Ha! You like that idea, I see. Let me continue. On 18 September 1997, Anna's Meta noticed a large, strange-looking fish at a fish market on the Indonesian island of Sulawesi. Her newlywed husband and scientist, Dr. Erdman, immediately recognized it as a silicanth. Mm, yuck! All these dead fish! Phew! What a horrible sight! Ah! Mm -mm. Dr. Erdman returned to Indonesia to search for another silicanth. In July 1998, a silicanth caught off the small island of Manado Tau was taken to him. He and Anas tried to revive the injured fish, swimming with it in shallow water, but it died. This discovery extended the range of Latimeria about 10,000 kilometers right across the Indian Ocean, leaving us wondering about the possibilities of other populations living somewhere in between. It could also suggest that these amazing living fossils are not as rare as they were thought to be. Hurry, tell them about the Sotwana find. Patience, I'm getting there. The sighting of silicons on the 28th October 2000 caused even greater excitement. A group of recreational divers using special mixtures of gas to dive deep discovered three living silicons at a depth of 104 meters in the St. Lucia Marine Protected Area off Sotwana Bay, South Africa. The group decided to launch an expedition to confirm the identification and film the silicons. Unfortunately, after finding and filming three fish at 115 meters, the dive expedition ended tragically with the death of one of the divers as he ascended to the surface. A hard sacrifice for science by a courageous diver. Deep sea diving can be very dangerous. Silicons have the same problem when we are brought to the surface by fisher folk. Luckily, scientists now use a wonderful submersible, the ROV, remotely operated vehicle, to visit the silicons down in the deep. Scientists from all over the world, but mainly Southern Africa, will work together on the information brought up by the ROV. Wow! I didn't realize that we were that interesting. So, what are those scientists going to do? I can tell you about marine geoscientists. Imagine the fish river canyon deep underwater. Then you will have a picture in your minds of the deep sea canyons in which the silicons live. We geoscientists are mapping the floor of the ocean to identify canyons in which the silicons may be found. Take a look at one of these computer-generated maps of the right canyon. Can you find the right canyon on the map below? Hey, is that my home? Now that is clever. 
So you scientists are good for something, I see. Hmm? <laughs> oh, yes. Oceanographers are important too. We will be researching how ocean currents, pollution, and global warming affect you silicons. Yes, yes. That will be useful. I don't fancy my home getting any hotter. Yo. Global warming may affect you in other ways too. Both global warming and pollution can kill the tiny animals whose bodies make up coral reefs. Coral reefs are the homes of many sea creatures. If these die, they could easily affect you higher up in the food chain. So, how much do biologists know about who is who in Kenyan country? Note, I am top of the food pyramid, okay? Mm. That's where I would like to be. Ha! You can maybe eat my smaller brothers, but watch out for big sharks. Sometimes we are on top. We biologists are investigating food chains such as this one. We need to know what silicons eat because their food supply may also be affected by pollution, temperature, currents, or fishing. Well, when they visit again, we can show the biologist more about our lifestyle, you know, movements and habits. They already know some things about you guys. You are lazy, hanging around in caves during the day and at night, moving from cave to cave, searching for prey, often just drifting in the current. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, 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 no. I would say wise, not lazy, okay? There is not much food around in the deep water. Without much food, we don't have energy to waste dashing about after our prey. <laughs> Do you know that each silicanth has its own pattern of white markings? So scientists can recognize and track individuals. Can you see the letter M underneath my dorsal fin? Of course. The M is for Marjorie. That's right. Take a look at this picture. It is difficult to see because it is a photo taken from an underwater video clip. But if you look carefully, you will recognize the markings. Now look at this second picture. Can you recognize the same Y shape between the first and second dorsal fins? And can you see the backwards C shape near the anal fin? Even though these photos were taken on two different dives, we know it is the same fish. Biologists also know that silicons are nocturnal fish. They hunt at night and congregate in caves in the walls of the canyons during the day. Yes, we hide in our caves from large predators such as deep water sharks. We are also very well protected through our camouflage. Can you see me? As geneticists are doing some really interesting work, we collect the scales of you South African silicones and use your DNA to see how closely related you are to your Indonesian and Comoros cousins. Hold on there when you call us cousins. I'm a South African silicon. I don't want to be called their cousins. Unless you can prove it using genetics. <laughs> That's exactly what we need to find out. How closely are you related to the other silicons? Some scientists think your great, great, and many more greats, Granny, may have started the Sodwana population by floating down to South Africa, carrying a number of babies with her. Actually, I like the idea of being different, you know. I like the idea of being rare. If I am rare, I am more endangered. And scientists can argue for my protection. Hmm. Well, you are lucky you live in the Sodwana Marine Protected Area. Otherwise, you could end up rare on someone's plate. Seeing as we are talking about relatives, do you know that you might be one of the closest sea relatives to four-legged land animals and of course humans as well? Oh yes, of course! Why do you think I'm called old four legs? Oh, my long, 
lost brothers and sisters come here well that is up to us geneticists to prove it is because of your limb like fins that scientists think you could be the ancestor of land vertebrates stop getting all mushy now it is time to say goodbye well this is our story we are hoping that we have inspired you to become scientists yourselves and that some of you will one day visit the silicons in their watery homes well if you do i hope you have a sense of humor because every new scientist on board of the rov is initiated with a big splash